Hi everyone and welcome back to Neuropsychology. So today we are going to start covering chapter 19 which is everything about language. So in this video we will talk about what is language and we're going to talk about the structure of language. So we're briefly going to uh, talk about different definitions, so specifically phonemes and morphemes, and uh, what our lexicon is, uh, syntax, semantics, prosody, and discourse. And then we are also going to talk about how we create sound. So we're gonna, we're going to talk about our vocal cords, how they're in our larynx, and our vocal tract. And then lastly, we will talk about formants. Okay, so using language is an amazing ability we have and our ability um, or our language is very specialized so for humans. So think about how your daily life kind of depends on your ability to talk and also to listen and to read. So we learn language at a very, very young age and often we learn a lot of words before we can do complex movements such as ride a bike or catch a baseball. We learn to use words to identify and learn about everything in our environment. Um, the word language actually is derived from the word langue, which is an Anglo-French word for tongue. So basically, it describes language as using sound combinations for communication. However, language is actually much more than just um, the sound of our use of sound. It is also guided by many rules, so we can also read language or hear language. Many other animal species, they have also evolved forms of communication, but no other species uses language the way we humans do. Okay, so to most, words are the meaningful unit of language. However, linguists can break up language down even further. So the view that words consist of fundamental language sounds, that is called a phoneme or phonemes. So phonemes are the smallest language sounds. Phonologically analysis determines how we link these phonemes together. So when we link these together, when we combine these phonemes, we get morphemes. Morphemes are the smallest meaningful units of word. So an example of a morpheme could be a base. So let's say do in undo. Or it can be an affix. So for example, the un in undo. It can also be an inflection. So for example, the s in the word girls. And some morphemes themselves are already complete words but most of them have to be combined to form words. Okay, so then we have our lexicon. A lexicon comprises a memory store that contains words and their meanings. So a lexicon um, is technically all the words we have in a given language. So it's kind of like a dictionary. Words are strung together in patterns that conform to the language rules of grammar. So this is where syntax comes in. So these rules of grammar are called syntax. And a key aspect of uh, syntax is using the appropriate verb tense. So the meaning connected to all these words and the meaning connected to sentences is called semantics. So whenever we have a, me um, a sentence and it means something, it has a semantic meaning. And the vocal intonation, or what we also call the tone of voice, is called prosody. This can modify the literal meaning of the word and sentences by varying stress, pitch, and rhythm. So uh, look at the image here to the right. Um, you can say, I am the teacher, or I am the teacher, or I am the teacher, or I am the teacher. And then lastly, we have discourse. So discourse is the highest level of language processing. So it involves stringing together sentences to form a meaningful narrative. So if you want to have a story, you have to use different sentences and string these together is called discourse. 
So there are differences between languages. So for example, in sign language, the smallest meaningful movement would be a morphine. In sign language, um, they don't have phonemes, but the smallest thing you can do is a morphine. Okay, so here um, are all the terms we just went over. So we went over phonemes, we went over morphemes, we went over lexicon, syntax, semantics, prosody, and discourse. So definitely memorize all of these um, descriptions. Okay, so moving on to how we produce sound. So the basic anatomy that enables humans to produce sound consists of two sets of parts. So one set acts as a sound source and the other um, set acts as a filter. So air that is exhaled from the lungs, drive, um, it drives oscillations from the vocal cords. And the vocal cords are folds of mucous membrane that are attached to the vocal muscles. And these are located um, in the larynx. So the larynx is kind of like our voice box and it is the organ of our voice. So the rate of vocal fold oscillations determine the pitch of the sound that is produced. So focal fold uh, oscillations that are about 100 hertz in the adult male and 500 hertz in a small child. So if you remember from when we went over um, the chapter that covered audition, the pitch is related to the low to high frequency. So that's how we can make higher sounds and lower sounding sounds. So our pitch is related to frequency and our vocal cords will um, create these different frequencies. So acoustical energy that is generated will pass through the vocal tract and it will first go to the pharyngeal, then the oral and the nasal uh, cavities. And then finally it will go through the nostrils and lips to the outside. So first it goes through um, the pharyngeal, oral, oral and nasal cavities and then lastly it leaves our body through the nostrils or the lips. Okay, um, so as this sound wave energy passes through our entire vocal tract, it uh, it creates kind of like groups of sound waves that are very specific to a vowel sound. So these groups of sound waves are called formants. So formants are groups of sound waves specific to a specific vowel. Formants modify the emitted sound, allowing specific frequencies to pass unhindered, and they block the transmission of others. So basically, they're kind of like a filter, and they only let certain bands of frequencies through. So this filtering is actually very crucial for speech. The length and the shape of the vocal tract determine formant characteristics, and as these rapidly um, are modified during speech by movement of our articulators. And our articulators are things like our tongue and our lips, etc. So formants basically emphasize sound frequencies that are meaningful in speech. Okay, so the vocal system that creates these formants or these groups of filtered sound waves are very different between us and other animals. So for example, with other apes. So here in the image, you see uh, the chimpanzee on the left and you see a human. So the human oral cavity is longer than it is in other apes. And the human oral cavity, um, sorry, the human um, larynx is located way lower in the throat compared to other apes. So starting at about three months of age, the human larynx starts descending towards its adult position. And then it reaches it after around like three to four years. And then there is a second later descent of the larynx in human males, which happens around puberty. 
So that's why when we're younger, we have um, a higher pitch is because our larynx is a little bit higher. And then it starts descending, it takes about three to four years until it reaches its final destination. And then in males in puberty, it descends even further. So the descending of the human, human larynx is key um, is a key evolutionary in development and innovation in speech. So by allowing the tongue to move both horizontally and vertically within a vo vocal tract, a lowered larynx enables us to vary the area of oral and pharyngeal tubes independently. So basically what this means is it adds to the variety of sounds we can easily produce. So sound energy fuels our primary means of communication. But as I said in the beginning, language is way more than just the sounds that we create. So other things, other forms of language are gestures, um, also visual sign language, reading, reading in braille, uh, and also your body language. So the word language does not directly mean sound. Okay, so this was the end of the first video and I will see you all back in the next video.